Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. In the news today, a 25-year-old Westmoreland man, he has been arrested and charged by the police. His name is O'Neill Campbell, but he's popularly known as Rosé. He's living at Townhead District in the Burn Savannah area in the parish of Westmoreland. We are learning that on Saturday, April 8th, a 37-year-old man known as Chris, he was on his way to his farm when we are told that he stopped at a shop at Townhead. While at the shop, a dispute developed between him and Rosé, who was already in the shop. Remember, I told you that Chris, he was on his way to his farm. It is alleged that he had his machete under his arm. It is further alleged that Rosé, he pulled out the machete and gave Chris one chop on his left hand, causing a serious wound. Rosé, he then ran out of the shop and made good his escape. Residents of the area, they rushed Chris to the Savannah Lamar Public Hospital where he was treated and admitted. A report was made to the police who commenced investigations. Now, yesterday afternoon, Sunday, June 11, about 3 o'clock, the police, they carried out a raid at a house at Townhead and Rosé, he was held by the police. He has since been charged for wounding with intent and he'll be going to the courts shortly. I carried a story yesterday. It was about the killing of ex-police constable Alex Lee Smith, also known as Alex. I have some updates for you. Firstly, I told you that he was a police officer and he was stationed at the St. Andrew South Police Division. I'm now learning that Alex, he was charged for the offense of unlawful wounding and he lost that case in court. As a result, he also lost his job. We are told that at one stage. Ex-police Alex. After losing his job, he used to be a vendor in the Maypen market. I also told you that he ran a black factory. Well, I was corrected and I was told that he became a black maker. He worked for different persons who own black factory in the Clarendon area. So, he was employed. He was not an employer. Some persons were also asking. No, he was not a licensed firearm holder. So now, to the meat of the matter. What we are learning is that ex-cop Alex, he's involved in a relationship with a female. That female has a son who is a hoodlum. It is said that that son, who is Alex's stepson, he stole a gun from his cronies and he refused from handing over back the gun to them. We are told that the hoodlums, they spoke to Alex about it and told him, tell him to care about the gun. Otherwise, people close to him are going to start dead. The hoodlums, they didn't catch Kwaku, who is the stepson, so them killed the shot. Alex, he was walking home Saturday night, June 10, about minutes after 10 o'clock. He was dressed in a grey t-shirt and a blue jean shorts. He had a black knapsack bag on his back. Hoodlums knew the route he was walking to go home and they waited on him. Unseen the hoodlums, Alex ran off and the hoodlums chased him, caught up with him and pumped several bullets in his body, killing him on the spot. Just like that. The mayhem. So, you must have heard about the killing of young Daniel Rowe. She was picked up at the Brayton Primary and Infant School on Thursday, June 8th, where she was a student. A serious wound was inflicted to her throat and she was left for dead along Roosevelt Avenue in St. Andrew. Now, there has been a lot of speculations and we contacted Daniel's father. But before I go into that, this is what Daniel's mother had to say after she found out that her daughter, Daniel, was abducted. Listen to this. My mind, I, I don't know because as I said, um, I don't like me and nobody in you know, anything. So I don't know where, oh, where, where lead this, what lead this to happen. I don't know. I don't know. 
I'm always watching news and hear other things happen to other parents. I never expect it would happen to me. I never expect it. When I heard that my daughter went missing, I, I, I told basically walk out of my shoes go to the school because I said no man this can't I just said oh this is alright then just said oh this is alright then probably she, she come home with one of her classmates them who live nearby but I said no she not going to do that because she never do it before so I had it all over the place and that's, that's when I heard that she was at the hospital you say I'm sick she come mommy they are right, they say no, I'm not all right. Either she go get the aloe for rub my head or my foot, but she try to put me to sleep. That's just her. That's just her. I mean, wake up, I not anything, even me coming from work. She come and she will kiss me. Even if she has sleep and she knows I'm coming, she says, Mommy, you okay? And she kiss me. Because even the same day she went missing, when I take her to school, she kissed me and said, Mommy, when I come home, I'm going to do my project because I had a project doing for her for school. And she kissed me and said, Mommy, when I come home, I'm going to finish my project. So, like I said before, there have been many speculations posted on social media. I won't be a part of it. And I will not be repeating those speculations here. But these speculations, they are pointing at Daniel's father and someone connected to him. I can confirm that Daniel's father is a corporal in the Jamaica Constabulary Force, but he has been on protracted sick leave for over a year now. I can also confirm that Corporal Rowe, he was at the Halfway Tree Police Station on Saturday, where he was interviewed at length by investigators. I reached out to Carpal Rue last night, trying to have a conversation with him. I'm going to show you the messages I sent to him as also his response. So I started off by saying, Good night, Sir Rue. I currently run a YouTube channel named Papai Newslinks. I got your number from one of your former colleagues. My condolences to you and the family. I know it's not easy, but... If you need to make a public statement on the matter, I would really love to be the one to speak to you. If you decline, I will understand. However, if you wish to say anything, just reply and I will call you back at a time convenient to you. Thanks. Corporal Rowe, he responded almost immediately. He said, At this time, it's not good. I am being investigated by my organization as well as the public media. I'm not in a good mental state, neither physical. I'm not eating or sleeping. This is my daughter that's been slaughtered cruelly by demons. And I don't know how to cope with that, much less public spotlight. He went on to say, so sorry no interviews i then responded okay sir respect stay strong and my condolences again so in that text carpal ru he's confirming that he's been investigated by his organization meaning the jamaica constabulary force now we continue to dig and carpal ru if you wish to talk you have my number. Also, anyone else who wish to speak on the issue, send me a WhatsApp message to 876-343-1034. That's 876-343-1034. And please, please, we don't have time for the rumors. We do not have any time for the rumors. All right? So if you have any pertinent information that you want to share, no worry yourself. We are not going to expose you. We are not play that. Send us a WhatsApp message because guess what? We continue to dig. You see, I have some more information that I will share in a timely manner. Stand by for that. Now, in this next story, we are learning that Saturday night, June 10, about 10.30, a man was in the swamp bed along the old El Shamian Road area hunting crab when he stumbled upon 
human skeletal remains. The human skeletal remains was seen clad in a blue jeans pants. We are told that the skull, the lower jaw and other bones were seen scattered in different areas of the swamp bed. The police were called and they commenced investigations. The skeletal remains were transported to the Sunset Funeral Home for storage. We are also told that DNA samples were taken for identification. Now, if and when there is any further update, I will certainly be updating this story. This next incident, it took place early this morning. Monday, June 12, about 1 o'clock. It took place in the vicinity of Vista Print along the Fairfield Main Road in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. We are learning that a man, he said to be in his mid-twenties and a female, she said to be in her late thirties and she's a bartender at a popular hotel in Montego Bay. They are living in the Tucker area of Montego Bay. They were driving in a silver 2014 Nissan Wing Road motor car they were heading towards Granville we are told that a black Toyota Voxy drove up to the right side beside the car the hoodlum in the front left passenger seat he brandished a gun and opened gunfire at the man and the woman in the wing road hitting the driver on his left hand and the female passenger to her upper body the driver for the wing road he managed to drive the car to a nearby hospital where he was treated the female she was also treated but she was admitted in a serious condition if there's any other update i will certainly be updating this story the mayhem the me so let me ask you know something <laughs> let me ask you know something have you hit on the love button as yet if you have not yet done so remember to hit on it also if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be the first to be notified. In the final story for today, there is a WhatsApp message making the rounds. It's about an incident that allegedly took place at the Withan Police Station in Westmoreland last night. Sunday, June 11, almost 12 midnight. It is alleged that the police officers were in the station when they heard the dogs on the outside barking. They went outside and made checks when they were confronted by two hoodlums armed with handguns. It is alleged that the hoodlums pointed the weapons at the police. It is said that the police, they took evasive action and fired at the two hoodlums who ran from the station compound. It is said that they escaped in a waiting black Toyota Voxy motor car, which sped off in the direction of Savannah Lamar. None of the police officers were injured, and it's not known if any of the hoodlums were shot. Now, I have seen many comments on this WhatsApp message, but let's be realistic for a while. If you look on your screen, that is a video of the Withan police station. The station also houses a courthouse and a cell block. Prisoners housed in the lockups are charged for crimes ranging from murder to gun-related charges. You name it. There is no fencing surrounding the Withan police station. In the nights, apart from a few lights at the front of the station, there is Basically, none at the back of the station. You always hear police, especially some senior police officers, talking about access control. There is no access control at the Withan police station. Listen this now. Listen me carefully. Based on manpower shortage affecting Withan and other police stations, it is impossible possible listen to me good it is impossible to have more than five police officers on duty at any one time at the withan police station and out of that five remember now 
you have station guards, you have cell guards and police officers out on patrol for a station like Withern, as it is right now. May I talk about right now without no fence and basically no lighting at night. For it to be effectively manned, it will need at least three police officers doing compound patrol around the clock. And I might add, that is not possible right now. In the past, there have been far too many jailbreaks at the Withan police station. And what do the politicians who can fix the problem say? Like the then Minister of National Security, Peter Bunting, they blame the police saying it's negligence when they do nothing at all to enhance the security of the place. Now, listen to me. If you don't believe that last night's incident took place, it's up to you. But I believe. And remember me tell you, worse is going to happen if the security of the station compound is not addressed. The place needs fencing and lighting. Not to mention, not to mention security cameras. <laughs> The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick silver sing. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Joe. Show me a car, criminals, they're my show, show me a car, show me a car, smash up.